Perhaps today is the day you've been waiting for. The day heaven moves on your behalf. The day chains are broken, prayers are answered, and your spirit is reignited with divine fire. What if I told you that God's justice is the foundation of His holiness and that His mercy is the heartbeat of His love? What if I told you that both are at work in your life right now, shaping, refining and positioning you for a breakthrough? Have you ever wondered how God's justice ensures that no wrong goes unnoticed while His mercy brings forgiveness for every sin? Have you ever paused to reflect on the power of the cross, where justice and mercy met to rewrite your destiny? Welcome, God's chosen ones. You are not here by accident. This is a divine moment, orchestrated by the Creator Himself. I honor you for coming back, for finding time to listen to God's Word, and for feeding your spirit. I pray that today's message will ignite your faith, strengthen your heart, and position you to triumph on every side. My prayer for you is that God's justice will protect you and His mercy will elevate you to the life He has destined for you. Now take a bold step of faith and type Jesus, show me mercy in the comments. Let this be your declaration, your cry for His hand to move in your life. This simple act is not just a statement, it's worship, surrender and alignment with His Word. I urge you to watch this message to the very end, because there is a powerful prayer waiting for you, a prayer that could open doors you thought were shut forever. Don't miss it. If this message resonates with your spirit, I invite you to subscribe to this channel so you never miss another word from God. And if you feel led to support this mission of spreading the gospel, you can join our channel membership. The link is pinned in the comment section. Your partnership is helping to transform lives for eternity. Now, let's dive into this divine truth about the perfect balance of God's justice and mercy. What you're about to hear could be the key to unlocking everything you've been praying for. Get ready, because heaven is about to speak. I stand before you today, not as a mere messenger, but as a flame sent to ignite your soul with the consuming truth of God's character. I stand before you to declare that the God we serve is holy, just, and merciful, a God whose very nature burns with righteousness and overflows with compassion. My mission is simple but profound, to awaken your spirit to the truth of the perfect balance how God's justice and mercy work together for our good. This message is not just for your ears. It is for your heart, your soul and your life. It is a fire meant to refine and renew you. By the end of this message, you will understand why God's justice and mercy are not opposites, but partners working together for your good, for His glory and for the salvation of the world. So I urge you, stay with me and let the Word of God set your heart ablaze. Welcome to a Word of Wisdom. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, like the video, and turn on notifications to keep up to date with the Word of God. Let me begin with a question that cuts to the very core of our faith. Who is God to you? This is not a question to be answered lightly, for how you see God shapes everything about your life, your decisions, your relationships, and your eternity. Some see God only as a judge, stern and unyielding, ready to punish every mistake. Others see Him only as a loving Father, indulgent and permissive, who overlooks sin and offers unconditional love without accountability. But the true God, the God of Scripture, is both a consuming fire and a compassionate Redeemer. He is both a holy judge and a loving Father. His justice ensures that evil is punished and righteousness is upheld, while His mercy offers forgiveness and redemption to the undeserving. This is the God we serve, and today we will explore how these two aspects of His nature work together in perfect harmony. Let us begin with the justice of God, the foundation of His throne and the cornerstone of His character. Justice is not merely something God does, it is who He is. 
His justice is perfect, unwavering and eternal, an integral part of his holy nature. In Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 4, Moses declares with conviction, He is the rock, his works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just, is he. This verse paints a picture of God's immovable, unshakable righteousness, a justice that is beyond human comprehension. God's justice is absolute and impartial. It guarantees that every sin is accounted for, leaving no wrongdoing overlooked. Every wrong is made right in the perfect timing of his divine plan. Every act of righteousness is noticed and rewarded, even those unseen by others. Let us pause to imagine a world without justice, a world where evil runs rampant, unchecked by any higher power, a world where the cries of the oppressed go unheard and the pain of injustice lingers without hope. Such a world would be chaos, devoid of meaning or purpose. But God's justice ensures that such a reality cannot exist. He is the ultimate judge who brings order, fairness and hope to the brokenness of this fallen world. Yet here lies the sobering truth. God's justice is not only directed at the evil in the world, it is also directed at us. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 reminds us of our condition, saying, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No one is exempt. Each of us stands guilty before a holy God, and his justice demands that sin be punished. This is where the gravity of sin becomes clear. Sin is not merely a mistake or a lapse in judgment. It is a direct rebellion against the holiness of God. The penalty for sin is severe, as declared in Romans chapter 6 verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. This death is not just physical, but eternal separation from the presence of God, a consequence that his justice demands. If God's justice stood alone, we would be utterly without hope. But praise God, his justice is not the end of the story. While justice demands a payment for sin, God's love provides the means for redemption. Through the cross of Christ, his justice and mercy meet in perfect harmony. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 reveals this incredible truth. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ, the sinless Son of God, bore the punishment we deserved. He satisfied the demands of justice, paving the way for mercy and grace to flow freely to all who believe. The beauty of God's justice is that it does not compromise his love. Instead, it magnifies it. His justice ensures that sin is dealt with decisively, while his love ensures that sinners can be reconciled to him. Through faith in Jesus Christ, we are no longer condemned, but justified, declared righteous before God. This truth should humble us and fill our hearts with gratitude. We deserved judgment, but we received grace. We were enemies of God, yet he made us his children. Let us respond to this amazing grace by living lives that reflect his justice and mercy, bringing hope to a world in desperate need of his light. If God's justice stood alone, we would be without hope. But praise God, his justice is not the end of the story. Enter the mercy of God, the heartbeat of his love for humanity, while his justice demands accountability, his mercy provides a way of escape. Mercy does not cancel justice, it completes it. It stands as the radiant companion to justice, ensuring that God's holiness is balanced with his compassion. In Psalm chapter 103 verse 8, we are reminded, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. This verse paints a picture of God as a loving Father, whose mercy flows endlessly like a river, washing over our guilt and shame. Mercy is his willingness to forgive, to restore, and to offer hope to the hopeless. Imagine a judge who not only declares the guilty verdict, but then steps down from the bench to pay the penalty himself. That is mercy. 
Mercy bridges the gap that justice creates. Mercy says, you are guilty, but I will take your place. It is the hand extended to lift the fallen, the voice that speaks peace into the chaos of our hearts. Consider the story of the prodigal son in Luke 15. The son rebelled against his father, squandered his inheritance, and deserved nothing but rejection. Yet, when he returned home, broken and ashamed, the father saw him from a distance, ran to meet him, embraced him, and restored him. The father didn't simply forgive, he celebrated. This is mercy in action, a love that welcomes the unworthy and restores what was lost. God's mercy is not weakness, it is strength. It is the strength of a love that refuses to give up on us, even when we deserve nothing but judgment. It is the relentless pursuit of our hearts, the willingness to go to any length to bring us back to Him. Mercy is seen most clearly in Jesus Christ, who bore the weight of our sin so that we might stand blameless before God. In Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 23, we are reminded of the daily nature of God's mercy. Because of the Lord's great love we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. His mercy is not a one-time act. It is a continuous outpouring, a daily renewal of hope and grace. Let us also remember that God's mercy calls for a response. Micah chapter 6 verse 8 challenges us saying, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Just as we have received mercy, we are called to extend it to others. Mercy must flow through us, softening hearts, healing wounds, and pointing others to the God of second chances. God's mercy transforms lives. It lifts the weight of guilt, replaces despair with hope, and makes the impossible possible. It is the reason we can rise each day, knowing that we are loved beyond measure and forgiven beyond comprehension. Mercy is not just an attribute of God. It is His gift to us, a reminder that no matter how far we have strayed, His arms are always open to welcome us home. Nowhere is the balance of God's justice and mercy more clearly displayed than at the cross of Jesus Christ. The cross is the ultimate revelation of God's character, where His holiness and love converge in perfect harmony, creating a masterpiece of redemption that echoes throughout eternity. At the cross we see the profound collision of justice and mercy. Justice demanded payment for sin. God's holiness could not ignore our rebellion. His justice required that sin be punished, for He is a God of truth who cannot tolerate iniquity. The penalty for sin was death, a debt humanity could never repay. Mercy provided a substitute. In His unfathomable love, God sent His Son to bear the penalty we deserved. Jesus, the sinless Lamb of God, willingly stepped into our place, taking upon Himself the full weight of God's justice so that we might receive the full measure of His mercy. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 captures this powerful exchange. But He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on Him, and by His wounds we are healed. At the cross we see the holiness of God upheld as sin is dealt with decisively, while His love shines brightly as He offers healing and peace to the broken. On the cross, justice was satisfied, and mercy was magnified. This is why Paul proclaims in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While justice demanded a verdict of guilt, mercy extended the gift of grace, offering salvation to all who believe. The cross is not merely a historical event. It is the centerpiece of God's redemptive plan and the ultimate declaration of His love. It reminds us that we were not redeemed by silver or gold, 
but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, as stated in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18 to 19. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. This act of justice and mercy transforms everything. It gives us access to God, freedom from sin, and a hope that cannot be shaken. It is the reason why Paul triumphantly declares in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Let us never forget that the cross was not only an act of divine justice, but also a demonstration of unfathomable love. When we look to the cross, we see the cost of our redemption and the depth of God's mercy. It calls us to humility, gratitude and worship, for it is there that we find the ultimate expression of His justice and mercy intertwined. As recipients of this mercy, we are also called to live in its light. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 5 reminds us, but because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. This grace, purchased through justice and mercy, should compel us to walk in obedience, to extend mercy to others, and to live as ambassadors of His love. The cross is a constant reminder that though justice demanded our lives, mercy stepped in and offered us eternal life instead. It is at the cross that we see the heart of God most clearly, a God who is holy, just, and overflowing with mercy. May we never cease to marvel at this divine exchange, and may our lives reflect the gratitude of those redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The cross is not just a historical event, it is the eternal declaration of God's perfect balance. It is the place where His justice and mercy meet for our good. Now that we have seen how God's justice and mercy work together, the question is, how do we live in that balance? How do we, as His children, reflect His character in our own lives? As believers, we are called to be people of truth and righteousness. In Micah chapter 6, verse 8, the Lord says, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. To stand for justice means to speak truth in a world of lies, defend the oppressed and the vulnerable, hold ourselves and others accountable to God's standards. But standing for justice also requires humility, we must remember that we too are sinners in need of grace. Just as God has shown us mercy, we are called to extend mercy to others. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 7, Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Mercy means forgiving those who have wronged us, showing compassion to the hurting and broken, loving the unlovable just as God loved us when we were unlovable. To live in God's balance, we must hold justice in one hand and mercy in the other, just as He does. There will be times when God's justice and mercy seem distant, when evil appears to go unpunished, or when suffering clouds our view of His goodness. In these moments, we must trust in His sovereignty. It may seem at times that evil goes unchecked, but Scripture assures us that God's justice is never delayed. It is perfectly timed. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, we read, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. In seasons of suffering, it can be hard to see God's mercy. But even when we don't understand, we can trust that He is working all things for our good. As Romans chapter 8 verses 28 reminds us, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Now, my brothers and sisters, I ask you, what will you do with this truth? Will you let it transform your life, or will it remain just another message? 
God has called you to reflect his justice and mercy in a world desperate for both. Be a voice for truth. Stand boldly for righteousness, even when it costs you. Be a hand of grace. Show compassion to the broken, the lost, and the hurting. The world will see the heart of God through your life. You are his ambassadors, his vessels of justice and mercy. As I close, let this truth burn within you. God's justice and mercy are not opposing forces. They are the fullness of his love for you. The cross is the eternal reminder that you are loved, that your sins are forgiven, and that your future is secure. Live in that truth. Walk in that balance. Reflect his character. Let's pray this prayer of faith together as one family, Heavenly Father, King of Glory. We come before you today with hearts full of gratitude and awe. You are the God of justice and mercy, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who speaks and it is done, the one who holds the heavens and the earth in your hands. There is none like you. Today we bow before you, acknowledging your power, your holiness, and your unending love. Lord, we exalt you because your justice is perfect and your mercy is boundless. We thank you that you are a God who cannot tolerate sin, yet you made a way for us to be redeemed through the blood of Jesus Christ. You uphold righteousness and you extend compassion, proving over and over again that your ways are higher than ours. Father, today we cry out, Jesus, show us mercy. Let your mercy pour over every heart listening to this message. For the ones who feel unworthy, remind them that your mercy is greater than their mistakes. For those battling shame and guilt, assure them that your love is steadfast and unchanging. For those who feel lost, reveal to them that your justice provides protection and your mercy offers a new beginning. Lord, we thank you for the cross, the place where your justice and mercy met in perfect harmony. Through the sacrifice of your Son, you declared that sin's penalty was paid and salvation was made available to all who believe. Thank you, Jesus, for taking our place, for bearing the weight of our sins, and for granting us eternal life. Let this truth resonate deeply in every listener today, bringing healing to wounded souls and hope to weary hearts. Father, we lift up every person engaging with this message. For those who take a bold step of faith and comment, thank you, Jesus, as a declaration of worship, May they experience an outpouring of your blessings. For those who subscribe, like, and share this message, may you multiply their efforts and reward their faithfulness abundantly. Open doors in their lives that no one can shut. Let their obedience to share your word spark a revival in their families, communities, and beyond. Lord, I pray for those who feel stuck, those who are waiting on you for a breakthrough. Remind them that your justice ensures that no wrong is left unaddressed and that your mercy ensures redemption is always possible. Even in the silence, remind them that you are working all things together for their good. Father, for the weary, give strength. For the broken, bring healing. For the discouraged, renew their hope. For the oppressed, rise as their defender. And for those who feel forgotten, whisper to their hearts that they are chosen, loved, and seen by you. Today, Lord, we ask for a divine shift in every life connected to this message. Let your justice reign in their situations, bringing order to chaos and peace to every storm. Let your mercy flow like a river, washing away every sin, every regret, and every pain birth in us a fresh passion for your word and a desire to walk in the balance of justice and mercy. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this moment. Move powerfully through this prayer and message. Touch hearts, transform minds, and ignite a fire in every listener to pursue you with everything they have. Father, we know that this moment is not by chance. You have brought us here to remind us of your unfailing love and your perfect plans. Thank you for never giving up on us, 
for being the God who holds justice in one hand and mercy in the other. We trust you with our lives, our families, our futures and our hearts. And now, Lord, we declare together as one body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the mercy that meets us in our failures. Thank you for the justice that fights for us when we cannot fight for ourselves. Thank you for your promises that never fail. May this message go out and accomplish all that you have purposed it to do. Let it reach the broken, the lost, the hurting, and the seeking. May every word spoken be like a seed planted in fertile soil, bearing fruit that glorifies your name. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, for you alone are worthy. Let heaven rejoice and the earth be filled with your glory. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and Amen. If this message has touched your heart and you'd like to support our mission of spreading God's word, there's a link pinned in the comments below. No gift is too small. Your generosity, even just a penny, can bring hope and joy to someone's life. Thank you for partnering with God in this important work.